2024 Polaris. We'll leave that sled for tomorrow. Today we'll take out the 2023 Skidoo 165 Gen 5. The 165 is gonna be total overkill for these conditions. There's nothing wrong with a one-year-old sled and there's really no reason that you have to go and buy brand new. I wanna talk about the pricing on new sleds today and uh, my thoughts on that because it's, it's getting a little outrageous. I don't know why we got blue sky, it's December. It's supposed to be snowing. Let's see what Dallas has to say about it. Revelstoke is actually starting to look like Revelstoke here. The parking lot is pretty busy, even for these early season conditions. People are just itching to get out there. And uh, a little bit of sun shining. I'm stoked to get up there and just the vibe. It's good to be back. Okay. Let's see if I can remember how to ride a skidoo. I smell Dawson's race fuel. Seven hundred and seven kilometers on this thing. Let's get up there and uh, see what we find today. I'm excited to be back on the turbo too. Need some turbo sounds in my life. I'm I'm broken already. Oh, the black screen of death. Your iPod. <laughs> my iPod's broken. Okay, no gauge. It, it will, yeah. I should put my other scratcher down, especially since I can't see my tent. Today we got. Today we got a porcupine. <laughs> today we got Dylan, Dawson, Dallas, and Wayne up there. This looks so weird here this time of year. This doesn't feel familiar whatsoever. up here this weekend. Mostly from people hitting rocks is my guess. Wow. The big tour groups. Oh, don't fall over on the trail. Long way down. Be cool to climb up through that. <laughs> really? Break the drone first day? Oh, no, it's good. <laughs> Jesus. You know, it looks like there's tons of good riding in here, but we're just trying to push our way back. Maybe we can find some stuff that's a little bit softer. Wishful thinking though. I really need a 146 instead of a 165 for these conditions. Should we just drop down into the trees and see if it gets softer? Yeah, 
You know, I know this looks like beautiful conditions through here and nice white backdrop or <laughs> nice snow covered landscapes, but you can see it's uh, not even up to the A arm. And it's just, it's firm. Again, not to complain, but this is uh, this is Revelstoke, so we come here because of the good snow. This isn't exactly that, so we're gonna dive down here into the trees and uh, probably just do some steeper tree riding and try and have some fun there. <laughs> the trees are thick this time of year in here. This is tough. <laughs> yeah, that crust got thicker. You can't even plant a ski going downhill. Uh oh! <laughs> Shit! <laughs> I did not expect it to be. I didn't expect it to be this much worse. No. I thought it'd just be the same as the other day. So bad. Climbing straight up might not be terrible, but getting down is yeah. uh, good to work. We, we probably sound like such prima donnas to, <laughs> to everybody else that yeah. can't snowmobile right now because yeah, they have literally. six inches of snow. And snow snaps. <laughs> Did you lose something? No. Are you are you sure? <laughs> yeah, where'd your pelican case go? Ah. It's right down there. <laughs> You can hear that ice when he sets it down. We got one sled straight up and down. We got two, another sled upside down.
Okay, let's jump back in the action here. Should we go in the trees over there? Looks like it could be fun. Oh! <laughs> I should not be so tired from one little line. I think I must be holding my breath, focusing. Woo! It was fun though. Challenging. And you guys look cool. Where'd you get those shades? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Freeriderfilms.com. <laughs> but don't forget, you can actually get entered to win an all expenses paid trip to come out here. Ride this great snow with the boys. Uh, go over to freeriderfilms.com. You can buy some shades, lots of other stuff on there. Get yourself entered. Every $5 spent is one entry. Let's go find Wayne. I found him. <laughs> Unless I put it in sport mode. <laughs> hey, buddy. What are we doing? I have no idea. So we're gonna go rip the greasy trees. I'm going to the ridge place. Well, Gilly, are you going or are you staying? I'm following me. So we got two going out. What about what about you? Do you guys want you my guys fuel? <laughs> Does somebody want my extra fuel? Yeah, I think I'm gonna need extra fuel today. <laughs> we can rip through these trees, go dip off the other side, see if it's any different over there. And... Say, yeah, we go drop side, like so. drop to down by the lake. Alright, like I was saying this morning how I wanted to talk about new sled prices and how it's just kind of out of control. Uh, I picked up the new Polaris yesterday. It's $29,000 for tax. I pay full price for all my snowmobiles. I don't have any incentive from any manufacturer. And uh, the resale on the new sleds right now is just terrible. Players Boost and Skidoo Turbos 2023s are probably selling for you can't even get 20 grand for them this year. So you're taking close to a $10,000 hit per year per snowmobile. <laughs> <laughs> look how deep it is. Almost 154 inches. <laughs> <laughs> Holy, look at the rocks you've clab clobbered. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> look at your other side too. I don't remember this one to be honest. <laughs> If you're taking close to a $10,000 $10, hit per year, how do you justify that? I could sort of justify it because, let's be real, this is business for me. Even with it being a shit ton of fun. <laughs> I don't know how the average consumer can justify close to a $10,000 hit per year if they're upgrading their sled every year. It makes a lot more sense to keep your sled for two or three years at this point with how resale is. During COVID, it was, it was fine. These sleds were still worth a lot of money. You could almost ride a sled for a whole year and break even. Not so much the case now. When sleds only cost, when sleds only cost eighteen thousand uh, dollars, 
like five, six years ago, and you lost three thousand dollars in a year. That wasn't really a huge deal, but <laughs> oh, my arms are tired from that. <laughs> Okay, let's see some downies now. <laughs> Just seem to go right over the bar. <laughs> Alright. Oh, I just unplugged my gauge and plugged it back in and it works. It's perfect, I didn't put it on any kilometers today. <laughs> Definitely some slide action in through here. Over here. No, the snow is the same over here. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost ready to say work our way out. Like, it's just tough. This really is a if this was open water, we, we could do some fun stuff, water skimming, but <laughs> some creek jumping here. Yeah. Looks like the perfect amount of sketchiness for me. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you have to climb this now. <laughs> you guys left a lot of uncovered rock. <laughs> yeah, did we? <laughs> well, all the fresh snow slid off that hill, so there wasn't really that much coming up there. I'm like, I'm not taking that same line. No. Oh, it's a fun line. Yeah, it looks like Jump. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to fly over into a big pile of rocks. It's yeah. <laughs> like, like that. I want to ask everybody something about my truck too, see if maybe someone knows something. But the other day when I was up the mountain, I thought, oh, I could use my Ford Pass to lock it. But unfortunately, my Ford Pass won't remote start, lock, do anything to my truck. It's never worked for me on two of the Fords I've owned. And uh, I've uninstalled the app, created a new account, reset the truck. For some reason, it just doesn't work. It'll just sit there, load for two minutes, and then it'll say failed. So if anybody has any experience with that, or knows what might be going on, feel free to let me know. Pumping iron. Getting pumped up for the podcast. Yeah. <laughs>